Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. It's been a while since my last recap video, so we've got plenty of catching up to do, starting with the Xbox 360 emulator Xenia. This emulator has seen a ton of progress over the last several months, so let's explore some of the major updates that have been merged into the main branch, as well as Canary since my last recap. There's a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. For starters, Halo 3 and Halo 3 ODST are now much more stable thanks to the addition of a new kernel function, and while they still aren't quite fully playable, they're getting very close. There are just a few bugs with the graphics and audio that still need to be worked out, and Halo 3 did crash on me once during several hours of playing. This addition, along with some other kernel and cache improvements, have also allowed the recently released Halo 3 Delta build, as well as some of the other older Halo 3 builds to run and load maps. Of course, the Master Chief Collection is still the best way to experience the retail Halo games on PC, especially with the Nucleus Co-op mod bringing split-screen back into the mix, since performance is still pretty rough in a split-screen campaign on Xenia. That said, not everyone wants to repurchase these games to play them on PC, so it's awesome to see them getting closer to being fully playable on this emulator. Another new kernel function has brought both Naughty Bear and Wet in-game and both are running well on decent hardware, although neither are quite stable enough to be considered fully playable yet. Some extended error support has fixed the start menu loop in Silent Hill Homecoming, along with a no device found error and saving issues in Wartex Senko no Rande. Both games are running pretty well, although performance can dip in Silent Hill, and you'll need to hit F5 to clear the runtime cache to fix the exploding geometry in Wartech. This also fixed saving in Ridge Racer 6, and the initial save in Ridge Racer Unbounded. However, the second save in Unbounded still crashes the emulator. You'll also still need to clear the runtime cache to fix the exploding geometry in races, and the audio may drop out. Another update also fixed saving in many EA Sports games like the FIFA series, and the addition of a flag for local profiles has resolved an issue where these games would not find a profile. While this does fix saving in these games, most, if not all of them, still suffer from other issues that make them unplayable for now. An improvement to virtual memory allocation has fixed some crashes in Stormrise, London 2012, Dead or Alive 4, and possibly others. While Stormrise is now fairly playable, Dead or Alive 4 and London 2012 still have a handful of other issues keeping them from being playable for now. An update to the audio backend which invalidates the output buffer when there's no valid input buffer, fixed games that would freeze if the audio gets corrupted such as Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe. And as if all of these improvements weren't enough, a long-standing issue that caused pink boxes to appear around the wheels of cars in the menus of the Forza games has been resolved by implementing some workarounds for Viz queries. You may have also heard that the Xbox Live Arcade version of GoldenEye 007 leaked recently, and it is playable on Xenia if you can get your hands on it. Xenia contributor Emus has even made a custom build with mouse support for GoldenEye, as well as the Xbox Live Arcade version of Perfect Dark and the Halo games. You can find a link to this build in the description below. The Canary branch has seen quite a bit of progress as well. Due to all of the recent progress in the Master Branch, the Canary Branch still hasn't been completely rebased, so some older features like multiple profiles aren't available yet, but all of the recent changes to the Master Branch have been merged into Canary. One of the biggest additions to the Canary Branch in the last few months was the addition of a patching system. Similar to patches in RPCS3, these patches enhance specific games by doing things such as increasing or removing the frame limiter, removing effects, or providing infinite ammo, among other things. I'll go over how to retrieve and apply patches for games in Xenia in another video, so keep an eye out for that if that's something you're interested in. There's also been quite a bit of testing done on this branch over the last few months, and several games have been found to be running exclusively on Canary. For example, Resonance of Fate is in-game on Canary, and it runs quite well, although the background music seems to be missing for now. Chronicles of Riddick Assault on Dark Athena is also now in-game on Canary, and it runs decently as well, although it doesn't seem to be very stable yet. NBA Ballers Chosen One is also now in-game, although performance is still pretty rough, so it was running at about half speed on a 3080. One vs. One was a bit better, but the frame rate and game speed still dipped pretty frequently. There are undoubtedly even more games running on this branch that don't run on the Master version, so if you haven't played around with Xenia Canary in a while, it's definitely worth checking out. 
So that's just about every major update to Xenia from the last several months. If you're familiar with this project, then you probably know that the developers are dedicated, but major progress like this can be a bit sporadic. Things do seem to have slowed down again over the last month or so, but the devs have made a ton of progress all throughout last autumn and winter. So if you notice that I missed anything worth mentioning, be sure to leave a comment below so that it doesn't get left out. It's always super impressive to see what the team behind this emulator can do, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they have in store for us in the future. As always, there's a link to Xenia's Patreon, website, and Discord in the description below. And while you're down there, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.